All right, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and in this video, we're going to take a really quick look at f of x being greater than zero or f of x being less than zero, where that happens on a graph. Now, speaking of graphs, so you're going to have to recognize the Cartesian coordinate plane. And in particular, one spot we're going to take a look at is right here, the x-axis. That line is going to be very critical to what we look at. Now, there's going to be a part that we're going to analyze that's above the x-axis, and there's going to be a part that we analyze that's below the x-axis. So the part that's above the x-axis, that's where we say f of x is greater than zero. And f of x greater than zero, that's just a really fancy way of saying y is greater than zero. So I, anything that's up in this e region right here, that's where your y values are always positive. And that just should be common sense by this point in your math lives. Now likewise, I've got this piece right here, the de denominator, and in that area, that's where my f of x is all less than zero, which makes sense because that's where the y's are all less than zero, everything that's below the x-axis. All right, so let's take a look at our first example, and I think you guys will pick this up pretty quickly. First thing you want to do is analyze your picture and take a look at where are there an x-intercept. Now there's an x-intercept right here in this picture. And with a linear function, uh, what we're going to do is kind of analyze a couple of things here. We're just going to look at it and say, hey, as I come in from the left-hand side, because I'm coming in here first, and then I get to my x-intercept, and then I have my x-intercept, and then I've got all this other spot after the x-intercept that is below the x-axis. So everywhere that's below the x-axis, like this whole spot right there, that's where my y's are less than zero. So from one onwards, all the way to the right to infinity, that's all below the x-axis, so that's where we say f of x is less than zero, from one to infinity. And on the left-hand side, as I'm coming into my x-intercept, that comes from negative infinity because that's all the way on the left and all the way up to one and that's where the change is. Now when you make these intervals you always have soft brackets because on infinity or negative infinity but then at one and we always have a soft bracket on there too because our symbol here is less than or greater than. Now let's take a look at a quadratic example. Now for a quadratic what we're going to do so it's going to be the same kind of idea here. And we're going to take a look at our x-intercepts. One is right here and one is right here. Now the one on the left, all right, so I'm going to take a look at the one on the left. That x-intercept is at negative 3 comma 0. The x-intercept that's on the right is at 5 comma 0. So my two x-intercepts, I'm going to analyze those. And the part that I'm going to look at actually is the part in between them. The part that's in between them, this region right in here, all of that, notice your function dips below the y-axis. So that's where my parabola, all the y values in, in that area, they're all going to be negative, which means my function is going to be below the x-axis between negative 3 and all the way up to 5, because that's where my function is below the x-axis. Now likewise, so check this out, so this area right here, you know, this part of my graph as well as this part of my graph, th those are both above the x-axis. All right, and since I'm above the x-axis, that means my function is going, f of x is going to be greater than zero. So I'm coming in here, coming in all the way from the left side up to that x-intercept. So I'm coming from negative infinity, and then I stop and I change at x equals negative three. So that's gonna be the first interval. Now my second one starts here at five and then goes all the way to the right. That's gonna keep going up uh, and to the right. So I'm going to have from 5 to infinity. So 5 to infinity is going to be my other interval that's above the x-axis. Now with that said, since there's two of them, you're going to join them with this little math symbol right there. All right, so between negative 3 infinity and negative 3 and 5 and infinity, those are the two intervals where your function is above the x-axis. All right, and the only interval that's below the x-axis is between negative 3 and 5. So those are all the x values that your y values are below the x-axis. Now let's take a look at another one. Same idea here, but this time our uh, parabola is shaped the opposite of what it was before. So I'll have this x-intercept right here and this x-intercept right here. Now what I always like to do with the parabolas is I always kind of like to see which part's above or below first. So in between this region right here, so in between my x-intercepts, that's the area that's above the x-axis. You know, this region right here, my whole function is above the x-axis. So that means that interval is going to be between, so that's negative 5, negative 6, 
is where it's going to start and it's going to stop at 1, 2. So my other x-intercept is at 2. So that's the region, that's the interval where my function is above the x-axis. Now likewise, I'm going to have this other area. So right here, all of this part, that's all below the um, x-axis and same thing over here on this side. So those are going to be my my regions where I'm below the y-axis which means I'm going to come in from the left from negative infinity all the way up to my first x-intercept which is at negative 6 and then my other interval since I have two of them my other interval is going to be at 2 all the way to the right forever to infinity. So that's how you, you do that with a parabola but every once in a while you get a tricky parabola you'll get one that will sit right on the x-axis. It'll bounce, baby. When you do that, when you look at that, it's the same kind of concept right here, but this piece, it never dips below. So the whole thing is above, which is kind of weird uh, to when you take a look at that. So that part's above, and so is that part. Now, since my uh, function asked me to find where f of x, I'm being asked where f of x is greater than zero, that's both sides of that. Everything's above the x-axis. So I'm going to go from negative infinity all the way to my x-intercept, which in this case is at 4, 0. All right, so I'm going to go from negative infinity to 4, so negative infinity to 4, and then I'm going to keep going from 4 to infinity. And I've got to split it up like that because it never dips below the x-axis, and I don't have this piece right here. I don't have where is f of x greater than or equal to. If I would have had an equal to, then I would have done it differently. But I don't. If it was an equals, if I did have that um, piece underneath it, then the whole thing would be above the x-axis or on the x-axis. So that, if that were the case, let me write this a little bit differently. So if I was given f of x greater than or equal to 0, then that's where everything is. So everything would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that would be the answer if your inequality was greater than or equal to. Nothing dips below, so we don't have to worry about that one. All right, now well, I've got one more for you to try. This one's going to have three x-intercepts. So what I want you to do is go ahead, pause the video, and try this one on your own. Come on back when you're ready. All right, Rockstar, how'd you do? I'm sure you rocked it out. All right, congratulations. By now, you can easily tell where a function is above or below the y-axis. All right, thanks for watching this video. You guys have a great day, and peace out. Laters.